Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere, tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. gathered here today to mourn the loss of our dearest granny taken well after her time we really aren't that sad to see her go she's probably in the kingdom of heaven now putting out cigarettes on god's god's arm and scolding jesus about the ethnicity of the women he chooses to bang later on god will pull jesus aside and say he's happy for him but please don't bring any more dates to family functions until we figure out how to get rid of poor old racist piece of shit granny honestly elderly people please just die and leave us to create our politically correct utopia here on horror movie night okay so god damn this fucking movie um so this this was uh selected by a listener so let's take a look at that i actually didn't hate this movie that much but it it definitely i know you like this movie um okay well we'll get into that but I, it's definitely one that I would not uh, rewatch. This is only the second time I've watched it. Uh, I watched it. I, I was, uh, for anybody listening, I was the one who pushed hard for this one uh, because I remembered it being ridiculous when I saw it as a 17 year old or something. Uh, so this one was picked by. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go with one of the two. So I'm going to go with Tyler Sharp. Yes, it's Tyler Sharp. <laughs> uh, he was the one that emailed this. He said, I suggest the granny. It's a pure bad horror from the 90s that feels similar to Dr. Giggles. And it's the absurdity. This film has hot ladies. The main chick, hot or not, not talking about the granny. Nice effects and features a teenager getting pro wrestled to death. This is the perfect film to slide in between two grueling reviews as a lifesaver of good bad flicks. It's cheesy. It's not serious. Features characters you want to die brutally. And it's a horror movie for horror movie night. Well, that's the thing is that it really hits all of the um, (laughs) it hits all of the buttons or it, it, it checks all the boxes for what we do. So. You know, I saw it once when I was 17 or 16 or something like that. And uh, as soon as that email came in, like, you know, six months ago or whatever, I was like, oh, shit, that's obscure. I bet that no other horror podcast has done that. Let's do that. So (laughs) I don't love this movie, but I did enjoy myself watching it. And I'll tell you why. Because it doesn't take itself seriously. It's funny, kind of, gory, kind of, super early 90s, and... There's nudity in the first three minutes, so yeah. it really it you can't hate it. There's uh, there's quite a bit of nudity in this movie. I would describe it as carefully crafted trash because it's <laughs> it's a trash movie. It's poorly acted. It's stupid. the The whole conceit of the movie with like, yeah, we're gonna give you this magic potion, but don't put it in the sun. Like, fuck off. But at the same time, Scott's <laughs> right. Nobody's taking themselves seriously. Everybody is having what appears to be a pretty fun time, like, just fucking around on this movie. And, you know, when when shit starts going down, they are kind of fun kills. You see people dying. And the whole, like, once we get to the end, when everybody's all gathered together, that's a lot of fun, too. But the first 
40 minutes or so is a pretty hard slog to get through. It's not yeah. that hard to get through. Like, okay, Adam, I feel like you're me when I first watched this movie. Like, I was 17 years old, and I was like, I need more tits, I need more gore, I need more action. I'm watching this, you know, much later in my life. I don't mind the pacing nearly as much. Um I don't think I rode the fast forward button nearly as hard on this as I do in other shit that we watch. Hey, let's take a second to discuss how I think all three of us had to watch this, which was through a YouTube <laughs> link <laughs> that Scott sent us, which was literally You're welcome. <laughs> which was literally the quality of if someone took their old VHS tape played it on a television and then videotaped that television. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, towards the end I was getting like the static lines and it looked like it was fading <laughs> over into like 3d and shit. And it started getting really fucked up. <laughs> but this movie does start off with uh, probably the best line in the movie, um, which is put thy head between thy legs and lick me. <laughs> uh, actually, I thought you were going to say the law of the queen chow must never be broken. Um, and, but I do have a note for the, um, the, the quote that you have. Um, I was immediately grateful that she didn't have vagina dentata. Yeah, that was my <laughs> expectation. Like, you don't say that and then not have a monster vag. Uh, there's some, there's some moments in here that I have marked down. Uh, I don't, so I watched this like two weeks ago. So I have a note that says that CGI sword is there like a really it's, shitty yeah, CGI sword? Oh my god! The yeah, the intro credits, man. Those are hilarious. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's arcade level bad C- early ninety <laughs> CGI. Actually, I think that they used better CGI in the intro scroll for this movie than they did in all of arcade because they only had to do a twenty second spot. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. This looks like it's in, and like the opening credits are like a commercial for. Um, Shit, what is that you can go to and like and they have sword battles and shit? Medieval times. It looks like a nineties commercial for medieval times. You know, are are you trying to suggest that the intro for this movie is more of a an advertisement for medieval times than the cable guy was? Because I would argue that you're wrong. So so I I don't disagree with you that it does feel like like while I, I agree with I agree with Scott that that uh, cable guy is the most egregious medieval times advertisement but i get what adam's coming from where that sword feels like the sword that pops up at the end of a medieval times commercial where it's like come and see the fantasy at medieval times and then like cgi sword swipes across the screen <laughs> The thing is, is that you have way more um, experience with that because you've been to medieval times like twelve times. Oh, I go twice a year. It's the amazing. one time I went no, to medieval no. times, it was on a school trip, and there was dirt in my potatoes, and I was like, "Wow, this is really—they're really fucking giving me the full experience here." There's like shit in my to food. To be fair, to be fair, this is always a good time to remind everyone that you're from Canada. What? What, that they don't have dirt in Canada? No, I just think that they're not classy as some of the American medieval times. There's nothing classy about any of medieval times anywhere, worldwide. It's a stage show! You're seeing a beautiful stage show getting delicious food. They actually have a vegetarian option, which is rare for places like this. And you get to go sword shopping afterwards. I think that that's a delightful evening. Hey, Matt, th- this might explain a lot of your romantic problems right here, but What, just because I buy a dragon statue every time I go, so my house is filled with dragon statues? Do you think that's what I I feel like me? the first time Matt ever went to Medieval Times, one of the knights gave him, like, a handkerchief or something, and was like, you're, you're, I'm your knight now, and he's been just fucking enamored with it ever since. <laughs> um... So how about we get back to the granny? Uh, so. uh, I mean, if you want to get it back with the granny. Ew. So here's here's the thing. Um, the the the, uh, uh, the first quote that I have after the title scroll, I believe, comes from the the titular granny character. She says, "Beauty is having healthy bowel movements," and I think that there's a lot of truth there. I think that this movie speaks to me in that way. Uh, Granny also has a line that I liked, which is, you're the load I should have swallowed. 
Oh my fucking god, it's amazing. How do you not love this movie? Like, listen, we're gonna get to the end of this episode, and you guys can be like, yeah, I was really wrong about how shit this movie is. It's great. Well, no, I don't. So here's the thing. There's a note that I have eventually in here that says it's taking 50 minutes for this killer granny to appear. And like, that's the thing is it's just like a, it's a bit of a hike. I mean, this is weird coming from me, but there is so much wrestling in this movie. <laughs> like, yeah, there is. Uh, that is another line I have. That is so fake. Yeah. And I was like, that is a good joke. I mean, I don't think Matt's going to like it, but that's my good joke. Um, I also have one that just says a record scratch with all exclamation points. <laughs> Is there a record scratch in this movie that I don't remember? I don't man, I would be not surprised at all. Um uh you know, I So I guess we got to point out the fact that the woman who played the granny, um the actress that played the granny, what's her name? Do you know? Uh, I have no clue. I remember reading her name at one point, but that was weeks ago. She's like a total she was a total babe. Um back in like the 60s and um she i think that that's kind of the whole point of this movie is that it's very it, it, you need to know that that woman was a serious actress before doing the granny because that's kind of the whole half the joke you know yeah she's really like playing down from what she should be for this movie yeah exactly so i mean i, I don't know uh, but I do have a note that says this is how Matt would babysit with wrestling. So um, there you go. I think that the name of the sexy, horny, uh, she's like a cousin or something. Is her name Antoinette? Am I am I correct there? Antoinette is a fucking her uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a Playboy bunny, I believe. I'm pretty sure she was in Playboy. And that was like she was trying to get into movies by doing the granny after that. Uh, so we really have a, a pretty competent cast of deadbeats, washed up actresses and n- nude models. So I, I think that that's a recipe for only quality filmmaking. Yeah. Stella Stevens is the name of the actress who played the granny side note. There we go. Yeah. Oh, she was in Chained Heat. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much, but that was funny. Oh, man. You know who directed this? Some name I can't say, but he directed the original go- uh, the original Ghoulies, and he directed Rockula. Well, I-, I can get behind the original Ghoulies, but I don't know what Rockula is, and you're going to tell me right now, I guess. It's starring Dean Cameron, and he plays a young vampire that can't lose his virginity because of a curse that was imposed on him centuries ago, so he forms a rock and roll band. It also stars... Wow. Uh, Tony Bissell and Thomas Dobley and a bunch of other 80s like new wave pop stars. Wow, because that Matt, just listen back to this. Listen, I'm telling you, <laughs> listen, listen to me now. It sounds stupid. And I realize that it sounds stupid. I promise you, you would love Rockula for no other reason than it does the thing that you love in these types of movies, which is that it's the 80s, but for some reason, all of his music is like 1950s rockabilly songs. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> 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 Shit. Shit. Uh, and plus, okay, again, so- it's starring Chainsaw from Summer Camp. Like, Dean Cameron's awesome. Dean Ca- I don't even know who that is. Have you seen Summer Camp? No. You've never seen Summer Camp? You should also see Summer Camp. It's good. Summer <laughs> Camp movie. Is this is reminding me a lot of the conversation oh, that we had on Maniac Cop. Sorry, sorry, not, not Summer Camp. I'm, I'm being an idiot. Summer School. Summer School movie. Okay. It's the one where the gym teacher who had like huge plans for the summer is forced to teach an English class because none of the other teachers want to do it. But like, he... wait, 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 wait. I know that movie. We did an episode about it. It's called Invisible Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, imagine Invisible Maniac, but um, more of an 80s teen flick. And starring a bunch of uh, up and coming '80s stars that never went anywhere, but it's really good and it's funny, and you should check it out sometime because it's uh, right up your you and Megan's alley as far as uh, forgotten '80s teen flicks. You know what's going to happen is I'm going to be like, "Honey, have you ever heard of Summer School? It's this obscure '80s movie," and she's going to be like, "Shut the fuck up! Of course I have. I've watched it five times." <laughs> it was one of those movies that was always on Comedy Central. Um, All right. Well, I'm sure she's seen it at least twice. Then, um, okay, back back to the granny. Um, 
So there is some delightfully, just deliciously bad facial hair on display in this film, I wanted to point out. Oh, yeah. Um, Any guys listening, if you think that facial hair looks good, watch this movie, slap yourself in the face, and shave. I immediately shaved after watching this because of this movie. Good, good, good. I, I've been trying to find some way to tell you to fucking shave your face. Dude, I've uh, been shaving my face clean every week for like two years now. We really need to get advertisers on this show because this would be the best dollar shave club advertisement <laughs> ever. All right, so I've got a couple notes about when the movie really starts to get going and Evil Granny shows up. I'm just going to rocket them off real quick. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it before or after the How's Your Meat question? I don't remember, so you can oh, go no, with that. Okay, so you, yeah, yeah, you're missing this. This is the best line of the movie, absolutely, because it's so deadpan that you can't not laugh at how absurd it is. The Antoinette, see, she, she, um, I think she grabs her uncle's. Oh cup no, she takes she, her shoe uh, off and then, and then she puts her foot into his crotch underneath the table. Oh, that's right. It's a dinner. Yeah, she's like, "How's your meat?" And he like takes a bite and he's like, "Hard." <laughs> Um, I forgot about that line. All right. So the things that I have were that the first coming to life is really dope. Uh, the cutting, I wanted to make sure that we talked about cutting off a dick with scissors. I wanted to mention that's the Lorena Bobbitt joke because it's the nineties. Oh yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention that the zombie puppet makeout scene is probably my favorite scene in the movie. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. I have the words hide hide in the soup pot. Rolling the fuck out of this film. Like, Okay. The things you're missing. Here, let me just go down my list. So um, I actually have a note that says, like, we're halfway through it, and I still don't hate this. I'm pre- pleasantly surprised. But uh, there, there's a uh, – I, I really love this thing that they do in a lot of – It was. I feel like it was a lot of early 90s movies, late 80s, early 90s movies, and they lampooned it in, like, She's All That, kind of, and then they seriously lampooned it in Not Another Teen Movie, where they frump up a hot woman – because like Sharon Worry or Shannon Worry, the woman who plays like um, Kelly, Kelly, yeah, she's hot as fuck, man. Like she's a super attractive woman, and I like how their like their plan to frump her up is to put her in bib overalls, put glasses on, and then just have a messy ponytail because it's not doing it. She's still hot. And she also is wearing bright red lipstick. Well, it, I kind of fell for it because later on she's like changing and she's like in a bra. And I'm like, when did the uh, when did the young girl change her hair? Because that girl had had her tits out the whole movie, <laughs> and I just didn't expect it. But yeah, she looks gorgeous. She's like supermodel gorgeous. Too much. Yeah, yeah. Adam, have you ever heard of the subreddit bigger than you thought? <laughs> yeah, of course I have, Scott. <laughs> That's this movie in a nutshell. Uh, but, so, so we have Kelly, who's beautiful and stacked, and then we have Antoinette, who is beautiful and stacked with fake boobs, though. Uh, and she's like, I, I, <clears throat> so the next time you see her, I believe she, it's right before she gets possessed, I think, and then chops off the uncle's dick with scissors, or she bites it off. I can't quite remember how his dick gets cut off, but it's gone. But she goes, um, I think you'll be more satisfied with these and she flashes her tits and uh and i'm like it's so 90s it's so it's just like they knew what you wanted there was no such thing as subtlety because there was no internet porn when this movie was made so or there wasn't enough to make it you know like a, a moot point to have it in movies and so they're just like people want to see this playboy playmates boobs it's what they paid the three dollars to come to this theater or however much it took to go to the theater in, in 1995 we're gonna give it to them and so they did but the the that said 90s boob jobs were so obvious like i don't know they've become some sort of black magic because it's harder to tell but now but like 25 years ago 20 years ago whenever that woman got her breast implants it was a much different ball game and i hope that she is safe and healthy yeah. and that those things haven't exploded. <laughs> yeah, it gave everybody pancake nipples because they just stretched to, like, the limit. Ugh. Well, it's also because I think that the vast majority, vast majority of surgeons were doing – they were cutting around the areola, taking it off, like, the, the, the top of a, a – a, like, a, a salt container, <laughs> scooping out the breast tissue, smashing in a saline implant, and then – sewing on the nipple again the areola again and it's just it's brutal like my asshole is is like taking a bite out of my underpants as i think about (laughs) (laughs) 
as I think about what it takes to give someone fake breasts, because it just makes me hurt. It hurts. Like I, any woman out there, if you feel bad about the way your boobs look, just someone is going to love you for them. You don't have to get a boob job. Don't listen to this, man. We have the technology. Go get boob jobs. Do it. You just got to go to the doctor, let him cut you open and shove shit inside you. That's all. Adam, are, are, does that mean that as soon as they get dick implants that you're going to like get the biggest, hungest dick ever? Fucking right I am. I'm going to get two dicks on top of each other with a hinge in the middle. <laughs> Is that like so you can turn one off and turn one on, or so that you can like? No, so they're like, dude, you're... I can like hide around a corner and still fuck a girl. Like, you know the guns, like you know, like the like the military grade guns with the camera on top, and it like swings around the corner, so you can see what you're. Looking at. You're gonna be like the pervious inspector gadget ever. Uh, All right, so um... prehensile penis, 2018. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Listen, we can't get anything done in this country in 2018. Let's not worry about your prehensile penis. Uh, so we're talking about Antoinette's boobs. The next thing you see is, I, I think this is actually right before, I might have gotten my notes mixed up, but right before she gets murdered, she's like got the, oh no, no, it's somebody else. It's the it's the, the other woman who's obsessed with the furs. Um, she's like, like orgasming as she rubs these mink furs like and she's like oh oh they're so good you know how we have this running joke about these like middle-aged women who are just ready to go <laughs> it's like that except it was just furs and and uh nobody gets aroused by furs like that so uh it's, it, that really kind of broke my suspension of disbelief nothing else in this i've movie. also but never understood and, the appeal of still keeping like the head attached to the fur the heads on it yeah. Oh, fucking creepy. And it's kind of cathartic to watch them eat the entirety of her neck in this movie. Just like, yes. mow it yeah, down. That's actually a really sweet, that's a sweet special effect. Um, and I like to call them the Murder Mink. So I have a, uh, from hence, henceforth, my new band name, Murder Mink, right there. It's going to be a vegan uh, crust punk band. It's gonna if happen. this isn't already Before. taken, you guys can call yourself Eminem for short. <laughs> what if we phonetically spelled it out that'd be good e m m i n e n well it's also like an inside joke so m in m please continue talking about the granny this is going nowhere <laughs> so uh by the way anybody listening if you want to see sharon worry or shannon worry in her undies it's at the 58 minute mark i, I just have that for future reference right there <laughs> um <laughs> So th- then we have the 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 kill with the um the the dick getting removed, uh, and I have a question for you guys: Who did it better? Um, the 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 bobbit, the 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 cut off penis, the granny or castle freak? Uh, well, the castle freak is highly contested as to whether it actually happened. You, I need to, there's there's whole Wikipedia pages dedicated. Yeah, to I need it. to harken back to the old the old uh, court case of Ding Dong Gate v. Flophouse. We're not 100 percent sure what happened there. <laughs> I'm so glad that we mentioned the Flophouse, though, because that will be prevalent in my What Did I Watch This Week? It's also funny uh, that you have your What Did We Watch relate to what we're talking about because mine relates to the director of this film but we'll get there so um, oh did you watch rockula no <laughs> <laughs> yes i was just playing dumb uh, so so we have like three more things that happen in this uh we have the the big fight scene where just nothing makes sense and then we have the granny doing wrestling and i'm sure that you have half a chub because that gets you going um matt and then we have the holy holy sword of the Kui chow and it's very phallic. Um, but then we – so like the little kid – the special effects with the little kid are awful. But it's okay because we're almost at the end of the movie. And then we have the gotcha at the end um, where the girl is possessed by the, the granny or something like that. And then we just have Shannon Worry like stare blankly into the screen and then it cuts to the, the credits. And we have a fun heavy metal song. Just like we did last week with Shocker. Was that last week? Yep. Yeah, with Shocker. But this one is by Blackthorn, which I actually have 
their discography. Um, I have a friend who lives a couple cities away who's a good 10, maybe 15 years older than me and has like this crazy back catalog of 80s heavy metal. And like a couple years ago, I was like, hey, can you just like hook me up with all your obscure heavy metal, like all your thrash and, and heavy stuff. And he said, yeah, sure. And um, Blackthorn was in that. So let me, I, I'm actually opening up my iTunes because I know that I have to say something about this. They had one record in 1993 and it's called Afterlife. And um, and it's got the song on it. That's right. It's got Hard Feelings. That's the name of the song. It's, it's on their only record and it's in the grainy. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken that it's sped up in the granny by like a couple clicks, which is really funny because that makes no sense why they would do that. So like when I, you said that you had Blackthorn's discography, you meant their one and only album? I, yes, because I had forgotten that they were, I think that they were people from another band, and that's why I have their record. I want to believe that one of the guys in this band was in like, grim reaper or something like that i'm not exactly sure but that would explain why i have it it's, it's not a good record i promise you that i listened to it one time and forgot that there was only one of them uh matt did you have anything to say about the awesome wrestling sequence in which the granny narrates everything that she's doing in his her own announcer no nope <laughs> nope i'm good <laughs> Don't need to talk about the wrestling sequence. Well, whatever. There is a sequence at the end where everyone is brought back to life, and it's a nice little family dinner, and everyone is mutilated and, yeah, all fucked up, their eyeballs hanging out and shit. Um, And then her dead husband comes back, and he looks like the Crypt Creeper, but if the Crypt Creeper had, was, like, missing a few chromosomes on top of that. (laughs) You're aware it's the Crypt Keeper, correct? Creeper Keeper. I'm, shut up. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, my God, Matt. No, it's finally happening. After was... five years of podcasting with you, Adam can't say words anymore. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the land of the rising sun. Join us, won't you? Oh, Shlaku Podcast. Where you shall receive Dick Joke. And this kid's boner is bigger than my thumb, and I'm a big dude. If this, if he grows into this dick, You're he's like, gonna be seven feet tall. He's titty joke, and her nipples are perk. Oh my god, I have a note as well. <laughs> Poop joke. The dude guy goes, Ugh, and he uh, flexes, it pops the sword straight out. <laughs> he pushes it out like a poop. And the rest. Black guy's naked. Black guy's naked too. Black guy's naked. They're both naked. They're all fucking naked. Go to www.oshlaku.com. That's O S C H L O C K U.com. And that's why, folks, that's the granny. We're all done today. What did you guys <laughs> want this week? <laughs> what did you? Why did you say that? Tell me what you watched this week. All right, I'll start because it came up earlier um, in the conversation. I finally, um, I I wasn't feeling well one day, so I stayed home from work and laid in bed. And I watched Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College, and it didn't make my day better at all. That is stupid. (laughs) Did you find Matthew Lillard in there, though? No. No, I I was like, I was looking, but I, I he wasn't like making a funny face, so I didn't see. Ghoulies took their time, might... but they got to the jive talking ghoulies just as much uh, as anything that's else. That's my biggest problem with it is that like, so the first ghoulies they say nothing. The second ghoulies they kind of just make like sounds and that kind of seem like they're inflections. But they give each other and high then, fives, and they. Dude, the high five in Ghoulies 2, still one of the best things we've ever watched for this podcast. <laughs> Not the whole movie, just the fucking high five. Because the, the cat one goes, ah! <laughs> Hi! That was by far the only good part of that movie, yes. <laughs> Except for the the drunk uncle who's like, you see this bottle of booze? <laughs> One time I saw two ghoulies give each other high five. <laughs> Is, Is that, that your? It? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I had. All right, I got. Um, I wrote myself a list. I watched uh, Louis Thoreau's My Scientology movie, 
um, which is interesting. Probably not the uh, probably one of the the worse, worser, not as good Scientology documentaries there are. Like Leia Romani has one that's really good, and Scientology and the Prison of Belief is really good. This Louis Thoreau one, they like do weird reenactments and spend a lot of time just doing bullshit for no reason. Um, so, I mean, I'd recommend it, but there's better ones out there. And I also watched the entirety of Wet Hot American Summer ten years later. And I feel like those guys have really lost, like, fell out of touch with what was funny in that show to begin with. Damn it. Um, yeah. No, this is what, this, only one of the three parts of it was funny. It was the original film. Oh, I like the, I, I thought that the first first week of camp or whatever it was yeah was i didn't hate first i didn't hate first day of I camp right i didn't i didn't hate the the first series that they did last summer or whenever it was but i just felt like it was trying real hard i i i love everybody in, from the movie and i love the fact that they got everybody to come back for at least the first day of camp season and it was great for that but i just didn't th- feel like it was funny like the first one was so funny and like deadpan and after all that time after whatever it's been 10 years or nine years between the original and the first m- miniseries i just feel like they lost the point of what why things were funny and they tried too hard to do fan service yeah, well, if, well, if that if that gave you that feeling that really don't watch 10 years later because they fucking triple down on that shit Oh, I had no interest. Uh, isn't Bradley Cooper not in it? Yeah, Bradley Cooper didn't come back. Everybody else did, but no Bradley Cooper, and that's never really discussed. That that for me is is the the make or break because I love Bradley Cooper. He is my second favorite person from the original Wet Hot American Summer. My first one being Paul Rudd. I think it's just hard though at the same time because you look at the different career paths that a lot of those guys have taken since Wet Hot American Summer, and it's. I think Wet Hot American Summer was very authentic to the state. It it was and it was fairly fresh after the state stopped being a thing. And each film that they've done since either as separate entities or as as a collective has always been one step further away from that. You know, what I mean like David Wayne's making role models and you know Michael Showalter wrote The Baxter, which I think is a really good movie but not in in any keeping of the humor that is the state. So like for them to all just suddenly have to go back to the sense of humor they had when they were in their early twenties just seems inauthentic at any time. Yeah. I got to agree. I think that, you know, like Paul or Paul Showalter, Mike, Michael Showalter, Michael, Michael Showalter, you know, he, he really got lost right around the time when he was in Tusk. It just, <laughs> really just kind of, yeah, where he played that French detective. Yeah. <laughs> him and Kevin, he, Kevin Smith took him to the dark side and made him smoke a bunch of weed and he hasn't been the same ever since. <laughs> okay. So here's, so here's my, here's my, what did I watch this week? There's two of them. Um, I watched a doc that is called not quite Hollywood. Um, for those of you who have been listening to the show for a long time, it is the first of a trilogy of documentaries. Um, I've seen two and three from this uh, filmmaker. He did another documentary called uh, Machete Maidens Unleashed, all about uh, the 80s exploitation films that would go to uh, from America. They would go to like South America and j- basically have no laws on what they could or couldn't do. So they would make these really exploitative films. And they also did Electric Boogaloo, all about canon films. Uh, Not Quite Hollywood is about the 60s, 70s, and 80s era of exploitation films, specifically in Australia. Uh, So there's some like Howling 3 in there. There's a little bit of Mad Max. Um, It was interesting. It wasn't amazing. Uh, 90% of the interview footage is just Quentin Tarantino. So there's that. Um, but the other thing that I watched, I'd never seen The Purge. So I watched The Purge. And the reason I watched The Purge was because uh, the Flophouse had done an episode on it a few years ago. And I was like, oh, I want to watch The Purge just so I can understand what they're talking about on the Flophouse episode. So I watched The Purge. It's terrible. I, I think it's a good premise, uh, a decent premise. It's not a good premise. It's a decent premise. It's completely wasted in a boring uh, hour and 25 minute movie and that's essentially what uh 
the flop house has to say about as well. But at the end of that episode, they're doing the what should you watch instead of the purge. And Stuart Wellington, who's the guy who's known for mostly always suggesting either head of the family, castle freak, or um, uh, fuck, I can't remember what the other one, uh, invisible maniac, invisible maniac. Those are the three he always suggests. He said, I'm going to change it up and suggest my all time favorite movie. The granny. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Well, look at his other three so... recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, is that like how I feel like this is so much more obscure than those other ones. That, <laughs> man, that, I'm glad that you waited until the end of the episode to tell me that instead of the beginning of the episode, because I would have been like, OK, well, this is gonna be a five minute episode. We have nothing. We don't. We don't get to talk yeah. about the granny after watching it because the flop house has already made a comment about it. So it's all, all he said was watch this movie. It's about a killer grandma. <laughs> and like, He called it a day. So we definitely gave it a more in-depth review, but it was literally I watched the purge immediately after watching the granny and then listened to the flop house episode and was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so, <laughs> I watched two shitty movies in a row for this. <laughs> So that was The Granny from 1995, as picked by Taylor. Tyler. Uh, Tyler. Fuck. <laughs> um, thank you, Tyler, for listening and suggesting movies, even though I still can't get your name right for an entire 35-minute episode. Uh, as always, you can send us emails at hmnpodcast at gmail.com, and we will be sure to go through them and put them into our little uh, page where we look at each other, all the suggestions that came in and decide what are we going to suffer through in January? So that's what you should keep it. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's what you should keep in mind. Um, (laughs) September has already been selected. Most of the episodes recorded, but January still wide open, wide gaping and open. So send us emails, let us know what movies you want us to discuss and we will uh, decide which ones we're willing to suffer for our art over. Thank you for everything that you guys do. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but the Patreon account has been completely redone and touched up and uh, pretty kind of awesome uh, with some new uh, categories and stuff that you can donate to. And it's getting closer than I thought it would, so I wanted to really quickly talk about an event that I'm going to be at super fast. Uh, I will be in Harrisburg on October 13th at Midtown Cinema, Uh, And it'll be for a live commentary track thing that I'm doing for a movie called Bloody Murder. And then right after it, they'll be screening the original Friday the 13th because it'll be taking place on Friday the 13th. So if you live anywhere near Harrisburg, uh, come and check it out. It should be a fun time. I'll bring a couple shirts and all that good jazz. And I'll be at the RetroCon convention in Oaks, PA the very next day. So it should be a fun time. Do not miss it out. Uh, Thank you for all your help and support. Check out the Patreon account. Rate and review us on iTunes and visit the website at hmnpodcast.com if you need help finding any of those things, because they're all linked at the bottom. The Stephen Bay is much smarter than us and knew how to build a website that actually makes sense. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week. Listening to the Geekscape Network.